Welcome back to engineering chemistry class. Today we will discuss different types of corrosion like differential metallic, differential variation, stress corrosion. Let us start with the first one differential metallic corrosion or galvanic corrosion. A bimetallic piece like zinc and iron exposed to corrosive environment, the one metal having low reduction potential acts as anode and the other metal acts as cathode. If you look at the reduction potential of zinc is around minus 0.76 whereas iron is about minus 0.4 that is why zinc acts as anode and iron acts as cathode. Let us consider one more example iron and copper. In this case there will be a migration of electron from iron to copper means iron acts as anode whereas copper acts as cathode. Copper having reduction potential 0 0.34 volts whereas iron is around minus 0 0.404 volts. Then what is the criteria for selecting anode? The metal with is higher up in the electrochemical series or having low reduction potential which undergo oxidation which becomes anode which corrodes whereas the other metal acts as cathodes. The reaction reaction at cathode depend upon the nature of the environment. Let us consider if iron will be there, iron undergoes oxidation. That is Fe gives rise to Fe plus 2 and this iron ion combines with the hydroxyl ion and gives rise to ferrous hydroxyl and which later gives rise to ferric oxide which is a final corrosion product. This type of corrosion occurs when two or more metals are in contact and jointly exposed to corrosive environment. These are the common reactions which are occurring during differential metallic corrosion. This corrosion is also called as galvanic corrosion since the situation is similar to galvanic cells. The rate of corrosion mainly depend upon the difference in the electropotential of the two metals. Larger the difference, more will be the rate of corrosion. That is where whenever you are designing a suitable device or any structure, you should consider a metal which have less difference in the less reduction potential difference so that we can reduce the rate of corrosion also. How to prevent the galvanic corrosion? We can place a thin layer of insulator between two metals or materials. We can stop the corrosion also or by selecting the suitable materials having very less potential difference we can prevent the corrosion also. The rate of the galvanic corrosion mainly depend upon factors such as potential difference between the anodic and cathodic region, ratio of anodic area to cathodic area and environmental factors or tendency of the metal to exhibit passivity. So these factors we will discuss in Next class, galvanic series. Corrosion behavior of the metals can be predicted by based on electrochemical series, but it cannot be predicted in case of analyze. This electrochemical series is based on the standard electropotential values. The, the electrochemical series has however a limited utility in corrosion studies and poor guide in predicting the corrosion behavior of metals and alloys in real environment. The standard electropotential is the measure of tendency of the metal to undergo corrosion or otherwise when it is in contact with one molar concentration of its ions. But in the real corrosion environments, the situations are quite different. The electrochemical series does not take into the fact of passivity of the metals. For example, chromium is less noble than iron in the electrochemical series, but chromium is a passive metal and its along with the iron imports excellent corrosion resistance. Similarly, in case of aluminum and titanium, despite being anodic to iron, exhibiting high degree of corrosion resistance under various environments. That is where the one more necessity of the series arises which can clearly predict the corrosion behavior of the metals as well as alloys. Galvanic series is such among them is an arrangement of metals and alloys in the increasing order of corrosion tendencies. In galvanic series, oxidation of potential of the metals is arranged in the decreasing order of 
activity of series of metals and alloys. The series in which metals and alloys are arranged in the decreasing order of their oxidation potential by measuring the same using standard column electrode that is the reference electrode and immersing the metals and alloys in sea water called galvanic series. The galvanic series determines the nobility of the metals and semi metals. When two metals are submerged in electrolytes while electrically connected, the less global will experience the galvanic corrosion. This galvanic series is more accurate representation of actual galvanic corrosion characteristics of metals better than EMF series. Chemically more active metals or alloys are placed at the top in the galvanic series while other metals kept at the bottom of the series. Greater is the difference in their positions in the galvanic series faster will be the rate of corrosion. Metals close to each other in the galvanic series show less tendency to undergo corrosion when they are in contact with each other. The picture represents a typical galvanic series which consists of two ends. One is a noble end at the bottom, one more is active end at the top also. So, in galvanic series is a series in which metals and alloys are arranged in the order of their tendencies or corrosion resistance. If you look at the differences between galvanic series and electrochemical series, compared to electrochemical series, this galvanic series predicts the corrosion tendency of both metals as well as alloys, but not in the case of electrochemical series. In case of galvanic series, Calum electrode is used as a reference electrode, whereas standard hydrogen electrode is used as a reference electrode in electrochemical series. The positions of the metals and alloys it may change in case of galvanic series, whereas positions of the metals are always fixed in electrochemical series. So these are the few differences between galvanic series and electrochemical series.